describe your music, Priya? I just call it Ruggle Wavy. Oh, you like it when I sizzle like that. This like a thought, it's a little like that. Why do you think you were able to break through? There are a lot of Tamil elements, and I even use Tamil lyrics. And where were your parents in all this? They said, if you want to go to the violin class, I can support you, or classical music. Would you sing a little something for me? They cannot believe how you got faith in me. Ooh, Priya, I like that. <laughs> hey, family, it's Carlos Watson. We've got a brilliant new singer on the show today, Priya Ragu. What a soulful voice. She mixes Tamil sounds, English sounds, American soul, the whole deal. You're going to love her. Here's Priya Ragu. Hey, Priya. Hello, Carlos. How are you? Very good. I'm at the studio right now, and it's very, very hot. <laughs> and where in this wonderful world are you? Where are you today? Today in London, working on my new music. Do you like to be in London for the studio? Is it a more creative space for you, or are there just people you like to collaborate with, or what do you like? My whole team is here, my management team, the label, me and my brother book sometimes, studios here. But when it comes to collaborations, I'm not much of a collaborator, I would say. Priya, say more about that. I need to understand what you're saying <laughs> when, uh, uh, when you say you're not a collaborator. What does that mean? I'm happy with the music that I'm doing right now. And if it happens organically, if, if we meet somewhere and then we're like, hey, let's hit the, hit the studio, then, then it's cool. I don't want to project on you, but you tell me, because I was reading about your story a little bit, do you think it's in part because you had to put so much work in to get your own moment? that now you're kind of focused on singing your songs and making your music as opposed maybe, to yeah. maybe down the road, once you've been able to share some of the stuff you have to share, you might be more into mixing and matching? Yeah, probably that's the case. And also I'm, I'm exploring as well musically. And even though I kind of found my sound, there's still so much to discover. And for that, I'm just taking my time. But of course, if Kanye comes knocking on the door, I wouldn't say no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love that. I love that. I love that. So you're still riding with Kanye through everything. You're good. It's just like I really separate that. Like musically, he's a genius. And his documentary was so inspiring. Yay West, hot fire. Y'all, there's 21 years in the making. I'm not going to say it's not a way I could fail. But hopefully with God's blessings, there shouldn't be no way for me to lose, really. Whatever happens is in his private life, that's his thing, you know. Who was that woman I would have met at 22, 23? who was a Swiss accountant named Priya Raghu. Like, who was she? Because that's that's so interesting. Like, like who was she? If I had met her out at lunch, what would she have been like, that, that young woman? She would have been funny. She would hide her insecurities. Okay, <laughs> and uh, a very, very cool person. Um, I would say lovable even, you know, uh, <laughs> but very bored with her life. For the longest time, I worked for Swiss Airlines, first as an accountant, and then um, I changed to technical purchaser, buying aircraft parts, and everything was fine. I just um, just didn't feel fulfilled, you know? And um, so it was a risky thing for me to quit the job and choose music. And uh, that's what I did, and I don't regret it. I honestly thought it would take me longer to get all these recognitions. I thought I had to release two, three albums or whatever, but it only took me four songs, which is um, a miracle. Tell me about deciding to quit and do it. Was there a moment? What, did it take three years in the making? What led up to you finally deciding, I am gonna take the chance, I am gonna do it? Was there, was there a thing, was there a moment or was it over a long period of time? I always had that inner voice telling me, you know, do at least one song and see what happens. But I just felt very insecure about it because I didn't think that I could write songs, my own songs. 
I loved like covering other songs and um, and performing them. But when it comes to my own songs, I didn't know who I wanted to be as an artist and what kind of music I wanted to do. So I just decided to take six months off. I mean, I quit the job and I saved some money. And then I went to New York with the goal to write 10 songs and nothing else. So I was there first five months. I was just hanging around, drinking a lot of coffee, buying stuff, <laughs> um, wasting a lot of time. <laughs> and then in the last month, I was like, oh, my God, either I'm going to do it now, write these songs or that's it. I'm going to go back to Swiss. And then it suddenly came. I was able to write my first song, Leave High. My brother was in Switzerland at the moment and we were sending files back and forth um, on Skype and voice messages. And that's how we created all these songs. When was the first time you called yourself an artist? I think in an interview. And it still feels weird, you know, from being an accountant. Now I'm like in the media and playing shows and all that. So it's, it's very, very surreal. Get down, get down. If you're a flower, you can come around. One in a million are trying to figure out. This for your city, if you with me, play loud. You know the MO on the top with the bow and the arrow. We look to the club seeing hello. You know the name is Damn She's Temo. How do you describe your music, Priya? Like when you describe your music to other people, like if they haven't heard you sing before, how do you describe your music? It's difficult to describe it. Uh, I just call it Raggle Wavy. Because it's it's a mix of R&B, Tamil folk music, soul, and it's also more free to try new things with that name, Raga Wavy. And why do you think you were able to, to break through? Because of a higher power. I believe in that. And also the music is something new, I would say, because of the fusion. There are a lot of Tamil elements and I even use Tamil lyrics, but then I went to Mumbai to shoot a music video and a friend of mine, he was like, hey, I can I can hand this video over to VH1 India and see if they can play it. And VH1 India, they started to play the song in um, heavy rotation. And then Rolling Stones India wrote about it. And then BBC Asian Network saw that and then they invited me. And that's how everything started. How you got faith in me? And where were your parents in all this? Were they always supportive of this? Uh, were they hesitant? They wanted you to stay the accountant? Where, what was their mindset? My parents were super strict growing up in Switzerland between two cultures and, you know, they came from a war. And then me coming up and saying, mom and dad, I want to be a singer. In their eyes, it's something impossible. So I was not even sometimes allowed to sing at home. Even though my father, he introduced me to music when I was 10 years old. But then one day I, I discovered Lauren Hill and then Brandy, Music Soul Child, and I really dived into this world and I started to sing their songs and record myself. And that's how I really trained myself. I didn't have any vocal lessons growing up. The moment I wake up Before I put on My parents didn't really want to support me with that. They said, if you want to go to the violin class, I can support you. Or classical music. Ten years later, <laughs> they're really supportive now. Priya, tell me a little bit about race in Europe there, which I realize is a big topic, but particularly for uh, South Asians. I've had Priyanka Chopra on the show and others, and she talks to me about, you know, how much she loved Tupac and others. And I was kind of surprised to hear her love for black music, black musicians, etc. cetera. Um, but I wondered whether in part it was because 
of darker skin, uh, that there was some kind of connectivity. But it's making me wonder when I hear you say Lauren Hill, when I hear you say Music Soul Child, when I hear you say some of the others, whether there is something deeper here, whether there's a deeper connection. Is there or am I just kind of making that up? Since I was a kid, I connected to black music, but also because I felt like we were in many ways very similar when it comes to humor and the music, but the music just connects on a different level, you know, and that's something that you cannot really describe. Well, Priya, what do you want next? What would, uh, uh, what would make you smile uh, two years from now, five years from now, uh, when, I, when I come and see you in concert in, uh, in, uh, in London or somewhere good? What would, you, what would you love to be true? Honestly, I have, I have no wishes or goals like that uh, because I'm, I'm really like living the dream right now. I'm working with the people that I want. I'm working with family. I'm doing the music that I want to do, playing shows. I have a lovely audience. Creating music is one thing, but then actually finding the people who understands that is another thing. So I'm actually really fulfilled. Oh, I like hearing that. And so you don't, do you take breaks or or do you find that, that right now because you're in this moment and it's come so quickly that you're you're right there all the time? Well, I'm not taking breaks at the moment because it's the beginning for me, but I would love to have a break. <laughs> <laughs> what would you do with it? If you had a break, what would you do? I think I want to go to India like for a month and then go to the Himalayas. You know what I should have asked you? What? Would you sing a little something for me? <laughs> okay, I'm going to sing one of my songs, okay. which is Kamali. But to flip the script. 2020 is a plot twist. Stay with me. Whoa, stay with me. They cannot believe how you got faith in me. Ooh, Priya, I like that. <laughs> Priya, I like that. That's how you're going to open up Coachella. I see it. You know what? That's always the first song I open up with, the show. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. I want to do a little rapid fire with you, Priya. You mind if I do rapid fire with you for a minute? Sure, yeah. What's your favorite music video you've ever done? My favorite music video is Kamali. If you were trying to name your biography, what would you name it? What would be the name of your biography? The Life of P. <laughs> I like that. What's your favorite movie of all time? Um, Life of Pi. Pi! Pi! Ah! If I could give you uh, tickets to go anywhere in the world besides India, so somewhere you've never been before, where would you love to go? I would love to go to Jamaica. If I gave you one do-over, in life, how would you use it? Do I have to use it? I don't want to use it. Oh, say more. I wouldn't do anything differently in life. Everything that happened led me to this place right now. So I'm thankful for that actually, yeah. What other art besides music do you love? I love to play this character in my music video. It depends what I have to be, but I can live that part of me in a way in music videos. If you could have dinner with anyone, dead or alive, who would you want to have dinner with? Jim Carrey. Priya, I'm loving where you're going. And I love that you love the journey and that you love where you are right now. I love that you said that you don't need a do-over. And I'm so glad for you that you're getting to work with your brother. I've gotten to work with each of my three sisters. Yeah. And uh, wow. I know that doesn't work for everybody, but, but right. I've had good experiences uh, yeah. with it. And it can be, when it works, it can be special. Oh my God, yeah. that's a big thing to say. Thank you yeah. so much. Monica, what'd you think? I thought she was dope. And she really got me when she said, I wouldn't change anything. The one thing that she got me with is that she's at peace. Whoever she is, that girl has figured out who she is. She's not trying to impress. She shows up. She's like, this is who I am. I'm not looking for anything additional. I respect people like that. I love people mm -hmm. that can say, you know what? Let me stop down and get this all together. 
it took her a while to do the work and to get there. And you can tell she's one of those people that whether it's internal or what have you, works on herself, which is why she wants to now do this pilgrimage to go to India, rest her brain, rest her mind to help her, you know, with her journey. If you go on her Instagram, she has like these little letters that she writes to younger P. So I was love when you asked her about her autobiography and she was like, it's going to be the life of P because she talks to her younger self on her Instagram. She'll put like a throwback picture like when she was 10 years old. She'd be like, 10-year-old P, if you only knew where you would end up, you would have been more confident then. So I think she had some things she was dealing with back then, pleasing the parents, corporate job, and now she's free, she's open because she let it all go and she said, you know what, F it, I'm going to go for my dreams. And I love that part of her story. Not to sound like a broken record, but she's a safe. There we go. We're gonna run sacred woman to the ground. We're gonna run it to the ground. We all we all the fucking sacred people on the show. Hey, really hope you enjoyed Priya as much as I did. What a wonderful soul. What a good person. I love that she didn't want to do over. I love that she's enjoying this life, that she's being very present. I love her whole journey. I love that she and her brother are working together. And it's so fun to hear that sound. Hey, make sure you tune in every weekday. Remember, we got special people for you that may even be sacred. Yeah.